Hey, welcome to another radio video and um, this is a little video about uh, digital signal processing. Um, one of the um, features that uh, more and more radios have when you buy them today is uh, DSP or digital signal processing. Basically, DSP is made by a onboard chip which is basically a small little computer that uh, takes the signal and can change its properties to help enhance uh, the signal itself and this is all done um, with digital mode so it's uh, zeros and ones though the audio for example of your receiver is changed into a uh, digital format a little bit like your uh, computer when you have an mp3 it's a digital version of an audio song well it does the, uh, basically the same thing it transfers the audio into zeros and ones and then it can actually analyze that signal and get noise out of it and um, enhance some uh, parts of the audio and you can apply multiple filters um, what you see here is a um, realistic DSP-40. This is an old little box that is basically a digital signal processor. And um, if you Google realistic DSP-40, you'll see uh, pictures and information on this little box. Uh, this is not on sale anymore. This box I bought maybe 15 years ago, somewhere in 1988, say 87, uh, 97, 98. Um, it's, I believe it's the only box that uh, Radio Shack or Realistic ever made um, for DSP usage. Um, it's a very simple box, so don't... Um, yes, it does change your signal to a digital format and everything, but um, this one is kind of simple and also operates at a different level because you have different ways of using digital signal processing. A radio can have a digital signal processor incorporated inside and it's going to use the signals directly from the radio itself in the um, different radio stages. Um, this one is different because it plugs in the audio output of a new radio, uh, portable, whatever. If you have a receiver with an output for ear, um, headphones, you can actually plug this little box in there and it will enhance even a small, cheap, portable shortwave radio in some ways. Uh, what's cool about the DSP-40 is its ability to um, actually add filtering that was unavailable before. So for example, my um, R8500 here does not have a CW filter. So in this box, there is a CW mod and it has audio filters which is not totally the same thing as a filter in the receiver itself because a 500 Hertz filter for example will block out signals that are uh, higher or lower than that frequency range. Uh, here because it's the audio um, that other signal is still there to uh, annoy but it's not going to be heard but it can still interfere with your signal if it's too strong so uh, that's the bad uh, the bad uh, reason or the bad way of having a DSP is that uh, by having it in the audio portion instead of inside the radio uh, it has more limited functions but it's still good enough that it does really really help a lot and I'll do a second video and show you a few of the features and uh, let you decide what you think um, some of the jobs that this little box does is incredible and some others are not that cool um, or don't really change much. Uh, this box has its own little speaker on top of, with a 5 watt amplifier but because the speaker is on top and sends the, the sounds upwards it's never really a good idea so I still keep my uh, realistic, my little speaker you see here which is no realistic from the 80s uh, it's been with me f since probably 1986 or 87 or something uh, because I wanted to have 
um, better audio off my radios and one of the good reasons there are easy ways to do that is to simply um, add an onboard speaker with a better response and also having a speaker that points towards you is better one incredible aspect of this uh, DSP40 is the notch filter if you are listening to a signal and there's a tone so for example you're listening to a station on uh, the uh, international broadcast bands and there's an pterodyne that we call which is a little tone at the same time that sometimes gets annoy, annoying sorry um, what's cool about this thing is that an automatic notch so it will actually find and block all of the same pitch signals and I'm gonna show you some examples in the next video you're gonna see that's an amazing portion the second thing that I love about this uh, DSP is the filtering uh, having a wide medium and narrow filter for CW and single sideband is really cool and there's a little thing called noise reduction which uh, is the uh, basically a uh, filtering out of noise on the, the receiver end um, but that is more limited I would say that I haven't seen much improvement using noise reduction uh, actually not only I've not seen that much of an improvement but I also noticed that sometimes it can actually degrade the signal instead of uh, make it better uh, for the price, well, first of all, if you want to find one of these boxes, uh, you'll have to really, really search hard on the internet. Uh, I've seen a few pass on eBay or um, some of the other uh, websites for uh, sellers. Um, the original price tag was, uh, I believe, uh, $99, which is kind of expensive, but um, now you can have them used on eBay for $30 or $40, which is a much, much better price. And if you can get your hands on one of those, I think you'll be uh, pleasantly surprised. And you gotta, you know, compare it to the price. Uh, don't forget that if you pay $40 for a DSP unit, it won't perform like a $300 DSP unit. It's, it's impossible. Uh, but some of the features of this little box are just so great that they're worth the, the $30 or $40 price tag. So, uh... This is a realistic DSP-40 and uh, now I'm going to do a second video show you some of the properties and you'll be able to hear the difference uh, with or without the DSP unit. So uh, see you on the next video. Salutations.